Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're gonna talk about making tech backgrounds. So the basic premise behind this tutorial is that we're gonna screen capture things and treat them to build our backgrounds. This is just gonna be an exploration, not a talk about specific settings or anything like that. If you like to see that kind of stuff, you can download our project file. So if you've seen the example I floated around on Twitter, it was built off of something like this that I made in Cinema 4D. It's just a clone cube in a grid about a billion times. This one I've made a little taller just for experimentation, but really they were all the same size like this. Just like a 10 by 10 cube, cloned out, spacing about 30 centimeters in between, and then just to fill up the screen. I dragged this window to be as big as I could make it so I could screen capture right off of this. I didn't export this or do anything crazy, I just took a still of this screen. Some of the things I screen captured video, so if you wanna get some software to do that, you can do that. If you're on a Mac, you can actually screen record your stuff with QuickTime. Either way, you could also use OBS if you wanna do that, that's a free download, but stills work too. Anyway, for some of these clones, I added a random effector for different sizes and just different things. I'm gonna leave that experimentation up to you, but our download includes a couple of the different things that I've built. This is one of the earlier ones when I was a little bit closer, but pretty much anything works. So in each one of these comps, I did some different things and we're gonna explore that. Initially, I was using Find Edges, but I decided to use CC Kernel because I think that gives it a better look. It allows you to choose kind of what edges that you're gonna show. And instead of Find Edges being really just a thick edge, you get a nice thinner edge. And after I did that, I added a levels and a tint to this just to get a little bit more of a broken up line. So you can see you can get that. So I continued in that idea, and I started to build a little bit different of a CC kernel. I have a tint on here. Let's turn these two off. I do one CC kernel, and then I did another CC kernel, which brings in more lines. And that's really interesting, because that second CC kernel still brings out detail that you would think would be lost after the first one. And I've tried a couple of different things after that, some find edges and invert, and that gets you some different things, but I wasn't really a fan. But that's highly dependent upon your source material. So I left that in here if you want to turn that on and off. And this box is also has levels and tint applied to it. So I started playing around with other stuff. So this one has noise added to this boxes layer at the bottom. And you can kind of crank that up or take it down and just get a different look. So it's kind of nice right there. So I started taking that original box grid that I made. I started adding different things like mosaic to it, which gives you that. Or just a little bit thinner mosaic. This one has a levels and a minimax applied back to that. And this one has a levels that takes everything down except for the intersections. So then you get dots. And then I went away from that and I started working with a smaller grid. And this one also has some of that randomization built in that I was talking about from a random effector, which gives kind of an interesting kind of grain to this. And then I took one frame from that, which is just boxes that aren't randomized. And I added an offset to that. So they'd crawl across the screen in an infinite loop. And then I kept going with that in different directions. Just kind of see what I would get. And then I took the entire interface of Cinema 4D my screen is 2560 by 1440, so I can move things around, but I also decided to scale this up. So I shifted it over and I started using offset on that. And this is the one from my Twitter post. And then I took that one and I actually added some wiggle expressions to the different lines of the first CC kernel. So then it gets kind of a blinking craziness to it. And it picks different lines because of that. So that's kind of interesting. Then I started playing with more randomized boxes, which is kind of what led to this. They're just faded on top from different random seeds. Then I started playing with different UI elements. This is actually the After Effects comp of Box09 played back. And I just screen captured that and ran it back through. So you can get some interesting stuff by exporting this or re-screen capturing it and processing it again. So then I started trying other elements, like this is just photo booth run through with a webcam of my face and just my desktop items in the background. And this one also has AE pixel sorter applied to it. And then this is just my desktop scrolling through with a flag that I made that already kind of looks like this look, just based on one of our older tutorials. So that's something you can do. This is a blank Google spreadsheet, also offset. This is another set of boxes, just at a different scale. And here's where we combine some of those techniques. This has that wiggle on the adjustment layer. It has this JS classic layer on top. And then I have the small cubes. They're also added on top. And then that little processor thing in the back. So when you play it back, you get kind of this like flashing lines and dots. 
which I think are pretty interesting. And then we have proc two, which is just further going on with that, with a whole randomized grid of cubes that I have instead of just that little piece in the middle. And then these are just those tall boxes that you saw at the beginning. So they have a little bit more perspective. You can use all sorts of different things. Obviously make sure that everything is pretty unrecognizable. Otherwise you might run into some copyright issues or anything, but you can do scrolling through websites, doing terminal commands, running through your messages, which I'm not gonna include in this because I don't know you, you might be a creep. Anyway, just make sure to have fun with it, play around with different things. And I hope you guys like this one. Anyway, if you guys have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I am Joe, and we'll see you next week. Bye. I know you're watching, Dan. You're the man.